Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant. And today I want to talk to you about Wheelight's Ninja 400 Bicolor Mark II chip-on-board LED. I'll just cut to the chase. At 400 bucks, it is a worthy imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Lower priced, more flexible, very credible version of Aperture's daylight only balanced 120D2. An excellent light in its own right. We own one and a modestly higher priced, superior on-location alternative to the Ninja's truest functional competitor, Aperture's $350 Bicolor Amaron 200X, which I was not able to get in-house in time to compare, but hold that thought. Though the 400 Mark II also brings with it a couple of niggling and not-so-niggling faults from its lower priced sibling, the Ninja 200, intact. With that said, I do want to tell you that I think WeLight is a company evolving quickly, and I fully expect them to be an increasingly significant player in the budget but performing LED chip on board monolight segment. I've drawn this conclusion after seeing the distance the 400 Mark II has come since the WeLight Ninja 200 I reviewed five months ago. A smaller and less powerful bicolor LED than the Ninja 400, I'm going to leave the Mark II off from this point forward, which I called at the time the best bicolor video monolight under $300, which was high praise indeed because this meant it was competing successfully against the new Amron chip on board LED monolight series from my go-to lighting company for years, Aperture. I'd like the daylight balance only Amron 100D so much that I'd bought one before I'd ever heard of WeLight and I've used it ever since as our daily driver, supplanting my $745 Aperture 120D2 because it's actually quieter. But with this said, there were four issues with the Ninja 200 about which I was less than sanguine. A. Fan noise. B. Non-standard mount for light modifiers, adapter notwithstanding. C. Fine-grained control of output down to a theoretical but far from actual 1%. And D. A remote app that simply doesn't work reliably. With the 400, which is also by color 2800 to 6800 Kelvin, and which offers special effects. WeLight has addressed some of these issues to varying degrees of success, as I just mentioned, hold that thought, and at the same time improved upon the 200's industrial design and build quality while raising output. Specifically, the 400 comes with a standard Bowens mount, no adapter required. The fan is significantly quieter than the Ninja 200's. It can be turned off altogether, either from the app, in theory, though only at a maximum of 50% brightness, hold that thought too, or directly from the separate combination controller V-mount box, which works quite well. Unlike the 200, the 400's fan seemed to me to cycle up and down as thermal management required, but I didn't look closely. To put this into perspective, shooting with a Ninja 400 Mark II right now at 50% power, fan off, 1 50th of a second at f2.8, through a softbox, my ISO is set to 200, no sweat. The 120D2 at full power would allow me to get down to about ISO 80, which I'll explain in a moment. A difference, yes, and all else equal, I prefer being as close to base ISO as possible, but as a practical matter, it's a non-issue here in the Batcave. The cables and connectors of the 400 are more robust than what one finds on the Ninja 200, and the imitation is the sincerest form of flattery controller battery mount box lifted straight from the Aperture 120D2, improves upon the original by allowing one to attach it to an appropriately robust light stand via an appropriately robust clamp with quick release mechanism. I like that. Though it would be even better if that QR mechanism were rotatable, allowing easier access from both high and low angles. Speaking of which, it would actually be nice if there were a longer cord to the mains or a better way of securing the brick to the stand. The 400's brick offers robust, nicely shaped buttons that one can feel in the dark and an easily manipulable larger main control dial. The LCD is large and legible. Very nice. The head unit itself is also well-built and a step or three up from all of the other relatively inexpensive COB lights I've tested over the years, as is the yoke. And the 400 is a full stop brighter than the Ninja 200 in my testing, with nice color rendition to my eye, never mind its stated CRI score, which at 95 is quite satisfactory if marginally lower than the 120D2's score of 96. Call it a distinction without a difference. You get all of this at just about half the price of the 120D2, which does offer effects, but not by color flexibility. 
so far, the 400 is looking like a king is dead, long live the king kind of product. On the other hand, the 120D2 is about half a stop brighter in my testing than the 400, set at 5500K to approximate the aperture's native color temperature. No big deal, yet again, but measurable. The 120D2, however, allows much finer and broader control over output, all the way down to 1%, nominally the same as the 400, yet resulting in a whopping five stops dimmer output than the Wii lights at that setting. This will be a really big deal for some, one of those leftover issues from the 200 to which I referred earlier. I also prefer the 120D2's lever to the 400's knob for locking the head in place. Another no big deal to some, but it does mean a little less futzing, which is always a big deal to me. The 120D2's fan can be turned off while retaining full power, which is a nice to have. It can mean less work in post on audio if you need full power, essentially granting the 120D2 a one and a half stop advantage over the Ninja 400, though, to be fair, I did not test how long it would remain at full power without any active cooling. Even more importantly for us at Three Blind Men and an Elephant, the Wii Light Remote app is still not ready for prime time, a far cry from Aperture's CitySlink. The first time I used the Wheelite app with the 400, I was delighted that it did recognize the 400 and properly controlled it. But that was apparently a one-time-only deal. After that, it was hit or miss, and then nothing at all. Utterly unresponsive. This is a shame, because it really cuts into the Wheelite's ease of use the way we use it. So, a second issue from the 200 is still not resolved. Most important for some of us will be the fact that although the 400's control box comes with a built-in V-mount just like the Aperture 120D2, when running on battery it only outputs to 55%, confirmed with my 45 watt hour FX Lion V-mount battery. But let's not get bent out of shape about this, because it is an engineering choice to maximize battery life on location by keeping the fan off while protecting the unit from thermal damage, and reduces the output by just one stop from full power. Wheelight isn't the only company which does this. In fact, my 120D2 won't output 100% while on that same battery either. This did surprise me, though I've never had occasion to use it with a battery. It topped out at 88% before simply cutting out in a surprisingly inelegant way. No warning, the whole control box just went dead. I had to go through half a dozen restarts to find out at precisely what output level the 120D2 would still behave. 88 miles an hour. Yeah. 88%, isn't that cool? I wasn't happy with the behavior. Although, at that 88% reading, the aperture outputs one stop less power than at full power. In other words, the difference between the two lights in this regard, maximum output on battery power, is noticeable, but not profound. I did not test each light to see precisely how much they draw, and therefore how long each light would last while on battery power, I will leave that to someone else to do that particular test. It also turns out, by the way, that none of the Amarans can use this style of battery at all. This is apparently because they require 48 volt DC power, and no ENG style batteries can supply that kind of voltage from DTAP. I'll wrap it up this way. I'd call the $400 Ninja 400 Mark II the Goldilocks offering among all of the lights I've just mentioned, from a new company clearly on the move, very much like Aperture itself. As is, I suspect the Ninja 400 will be a more attractive package than the Aperture 120D2 for most of us moving to our first real lighting kit, even with the dismal remote app and the inability to dim as much as some of us might want. The basic trade-off is the significantly lower price and bicolor flexibility of the 400 versus marginally superior build quality, marginally higher output, arguably keener industrial design, significantly more polished remote app, finer and broader control over output, and absolutely longer track record of the 120D2 and Aperture itself. Which I think actually warrants a kudos to you, we like, because Aperture is very, very good. And a bicolor means less futzing with gels when you're trying to match mixed light ambient scenes, for example, like a hotel lobby, when you can't afford to place gigundo lights outside of the windows. But Aperture is not standing still. Beyond the introduction of the Amaron Monolight line and new Lightstorm products, the new Nova flat panel, the new Accent lights, and the new modifiers, and a better app, and more, B&H, Adorama, and Amazon 
are now offering the 120D2 for just $545 as I record this in the fall of 2021, which is by far the lowest price I've ever seen for it. Still, except for on-location battery-powered shooting, and now that they are shipping at their suggested retail prices, instead of hundreds more as they were months ago, I suspect many of us will find the Bicolor Amarons more attractive than the Ninja 400 or 200 or Aperture's own 120D2. All four Amarons, daylight only and Bicolor models, are less expensive, smaller, and lighter than the 400 and 120D2. They have a better app and are quieter than Ninja 400 and Ninja 200 when the fans are running. Quieter than the 120D2 as well. They have a I think, more elegant industrial design than the Wii Lights, with even simpler displays. And like their older brother, at least the daylight models offer much finer-grained and broader control over output. I simply don't know about the bicolor Amarons. If you need a little more bicolor output than the 400, I believe the Amaron 200X will give it to you for 50 bucks less. If you can get by with slightly less output than the 400, I think the 100X will give it to you for $150 less. Why do I say believe when I haven't had them in hand? transitivity. In my testing, my lowly $200 Amron 100D matched the output of the still more than our twice the price 120D2 at 5500K, and as you'd now expect, beat the Ninja 400 Mark II by half a stop at the same color temperature. Okay, so now we've got the uh, Aperture 120D2, 150th of a second at f8, 24 frames per second, 4K, just as before. Now it's reading at ISO 160, at 100% power, this is the uh, Amron 100D, 150th F8 at ISO Auto 250, as I said before. And now this is 100%, and it's at ISO 250. Aperture quotes the 120D2 on its website, bare bulb at 1 meter at 7,000 lux. It quotes the 100D under the same configuration at 4,300 lux. And on that basis, transitivity, I believe that the Amaron 200X would offer more usable power for what we do than the Ninja 400. The only real downside to the Amarons compared to the 400, of which I'm certain, remains the fact that they won't work with the kind of V-mount or gold-mount batteries with which many of us are familiar which will be a big deal to some of us. I'd add that Sony-style batteries, like the ones the Ninja 200 takes, are not where it's at for maximum performance and reliability out on location. I simply wouldn't go there. So, yes, as we wrap this up, call We Lights Ninja 400 Mark II a strong entrant into the LED monolight space and an indication of the ambition and speed at which We Light is evolving. But it is time to fix the small details that make the difference between okay and great. The reality is that if you're looking to up your lighting game and would prefer to own rather than rent, without moving up to the larger and more expensive units typical of rental houses, all seven of the lights I've mentioned could be on your short list, depending on your specific needs. The Ninja 400 Mark II ticks off more boxes than any of the others, and as long as it gives you the power you need and you don't need the sophistication of the CitizenLink, at $400, it's got to be at the top of this list. If price is your most important criterion, more important than bicolor. The $200 Amaron 100D floats to the top. Only care about output and don't mind either daylight only balance or the absence of battery power. The $300 Amaron 200D should be first on this list. Need the option of a battery? Don't mind daylight only balance and want the power of CitizenLink because you've got a complex setup? 120D Mark II is the only option here. Don't need the power of CitizenLink, but still want fine-grained and broad control of your daylight-only balanced monolight and reliable battery power? Still 120D2. If you are on a tight budget and do need bicolor, but can't stretch to the $400 price of the 400 Mark II, the Ninja 200 will get you bicolor for all of $30 more than the daylight-only balanced 100D, including the Bowens adapter. But at that point, you're only 20 bucks away from the Amron 100X, 120 to the more powerful 200X, and none of them, Ninja 200 included, offers a robust battery option. I'd steer you to the 100X. And that is that. 
If you like what you've seen here today, please give a thumbs up, subscribe, join the conversation below because this is an incredible audience. If you'd like a copy of our Streets of New York, the book, head over to www.3bmep.com slash books. If you'd like to schedule a one-on-one video session with me for a portfolio review, explore or hone your artistic voice, select gear and more, sign up at www.3bmep.com slash booking. Finally, consider supporting our work by using our no cost to you affiliate links down below. Picking up some official three blind men and an elephant swag at 3bmep.threadless.com. Sending coffee money via PayPal or best of all, join us as a patron over at Patreon. However you choose to support us, as always, we thank you for it.